Okay, so now we're turning the corner into part two, developing leadership for organizational challenges. Most of what we've done so far has been dealing with uh, individual leadership or how individual leaders develop, but now we're gonna turn the corner into uh, looking at the whole of the organizational system. So chapter 10 talks about developing team leadership capacity. Anytime you're dealing with a team, you're dealing with more than one person. I, I found this, um, <clears throat> This little uh, poster, it's from World War I. Teamwork wins. Your work here makes the, uh, their work over there possible. And it says, uh, uh, without your, uh, with your help, they're invincible. Without it, they're helpless. Whatever you make, a machine gun or harness, cartridges or helmet, they are waiting for it. And this was issued by the authority of the Ordnance Department of the U.S. Army. And, you know, this is kind of a metaphor for how we should be thinking of organizations. It's not just uh, the team that's in battle that we should be thinking of. We also need to be thinking of the people that are supporting and other functions within the organization. So here in this chapter, we're gonna be talking about the nature of teams and team leadership, team leadership model, the team challenges um, that you're going to face within organizations and some are specific and some are general. A framework of team needs and then finally building team leadership capability. And there's a great quote in the beginning, all the human beings have been working uh, together to accomplish vital outcomes since the beginning of humanity. Teamwork does not come naturally to most people. And when you think about it, particularly in an American context, um, you know, we, we just we prize the individual uh, over the team effort. Um, now, there's a certain synergy that you get out of working as, together as a team, but think about this. When, when uh, one team wins um, the Super Bowl or, or some large sporting event, our first question is, who's the MVP? And, and so we have to think in terms of, wait a minute, the, the great, greater team win is very important, and we have to uh, focus on that. Teams share a social identity as a unit. Okay, I, not, not just a group. A group is a loose collection of people um, that may have something in common or whatever, but a teams actually share a social identity. They think of themselves as a team. They possess common goals. They are interdependent in terms of what they have to get done. They have distinct roles within the team. Okay, and now, uh, often when you think of teamwork, like in, in a class context, here's your group of five people and you have to get this group paper or group project done or whatever it is, and you don't necessarily have distinct roles. So you're not really acting like a team. You're acting like kind of an amorphous group. Um, when you have distinct roles, that's kind of part of the functioning of a team. They're embedded in a larger organization and societal context. That is, they're not the whole organization. They're just a part of the organization. Now there's this uh, chart, it's on page uh, 288. And so here we have the environmental context, that's the say the greater society, the organizational context, let's say that's your company, the, the team context in which maybe you work, you work together with say five other people in this team, and then you have certain team needs and you have leadership processes and they all surround and make for team effectiveness. It all is one part of an overlapping whole. Team challenges. Challenges are barriers or obstacles to team effectiveness, and they can create, or I'm sorry, and they can directly or indirectly affect a team's ability to create and maintain DAC. Some kinds of challenges all teams face. Let me repeat that. Some kind of challenges all teams face. Other kinds of challenges are more problematic for particular teams. It's just like the general or specific environment when you're dealing with an organization. Uh, McDonald's faces certain things that are specific to its industry, and um, they face general regulations of um, uh, from um, uh, environmental organizations that everybody faces, right? Um, and uh, same thing with your team. Your team, depending on what you're doing, are going to have specific challenges and general challenges that everybody faces. Now, when we're dealing with, and this is um, uh, the chart on page 289, when we're dealing with challenges, needs, and team leadership functions, we have the team context, we have the organizational context, and we have the environmental context. Just like what we saw in that earlier chart, it just spells out what are the things that uh, will be affecting in those different areas. But I want to focus on this, that the key need, uh, team needs, and it's going to be different when you're in the planning phase, you're going to have certain things that you need to done as opposed to the action phase and as opposed to the interpersonal needs that will kind of always be there. So here in the planning phase, the first thing, and this is the things that you should have done in the very beginning of the course, create a team charter, uh, team goals, 
team norms, establishing them. How often are we going to talk to each other, contact each other, uh, what's acceptable, what's not acceptable behavior. Task performance strategy, shared understanding, and team memory. These are all important things in that planning phase. Then when you move into the action phase, you have to monitor and you have to coordinate and you have to control and, and not so much control, but communicate and, and make sure that everything is when I say not so much control, I mean, don't think of control in the hard sense of let's make sure you're getting it done or else there's going to be, no, but you need to work together and make sure that everything's on track. And then interpersonal needs are things where you need to motivate and have psychological safety where it's a safe environment and you have to manage emotions and, and deal with conflict. These are interpersonal needs that will be ongoing and, and uh, very important. Teams are most effective in doing complex, ambiguous and interdependent tasks. Now think about that. that th this just makes sense because um, if an individual doing a complex task won't be able to see it from all angles. Ambiguous tasks. Um, think about where this uh, team is not necessarily needed, like in, in a factory um, kind of environment. If you're just punching a hole into a sheet of iron and then to get in the next sheet of iron and punching another hole and then uh, punching another hole and then punching another hole, you don't need teamwork kind of help, but where it's important is in these complex, ambiguous, or interdependent tasks. And in order to work effectively, teams need resources of time, money, technology, talent, and access. They, they need all these things in order to be effective. Now, a framework for team needs, we already talked about the planning phase and the action phase and the interpersonal needs because of the chart, so I, I'm already addressing that. Let me go on and, um, and, and uh, here are the planning needs, the action uh, needs, and then the uh, interpersonal needs. You can look at that in the, in the text. Let me go on and talk about this. This is one of the most important things that uh, I'm going to address in this entire chapter. Emotions are contagious within the team. Let me say that again. Emotions are contagious, contagious like a virus within a team. And now the, the research on emotional contagion is going to show that the person with the most overwhelming personality is going to spread the contagion. So say the happiest guy walks into a room and he's just jovial. And you can't help but feel good. Somebody's really bummed out or is really angry and you, you feel that as well. Now, it happens with the, with the strongest emotion person, and it also is amplified if you're the manager. So if you're the, the team leader, your emotions spread much more quickly than somebody else's. So you got to be really careful about that emotional contagion. Building team leadership capability, we're talking about things like training and coaching, and of course, our old friend ACS, assessment, challenge, and support, and then benchmarking. TLC, team leadership capability, refers to the team's collective, that is as a team, ability to satisfy team needs in the course of meeting whatever challenges arise. That's team leadership capability. And your goal should be to improve or increase your capability, or again, not your capability you're on your own, the team's collective capability to satisfy these needs. And then finally, uh, leadership is a process rather than a specific person. Very often we think about leadership as being a specific person. Well, he's the leader. No, leadership is a process. It's an interaction between the leaders and the followers. And, you know, if you're really doing it, the followers are not just followers, but they're co-leaders in some way. They're taking on uh, specific parts of it. Anyone on a team can perform the leadership function. It's not just something for the anointed. And, and when we understand this, that leadership is really a process, it changes everything about how we think about leaders. I want to close with this last little uh, bit. If you're, um, if you're on the, the um, uh, listening to this as a podcast, you're not going to hear it. But if you're watching this on, uh, on the video podcast, uh, then you'll see this amazing little uh, video from Honda about teamwork. Their engineers must have had a field day with this. Here we go.
Isn't it nice when things just work? Now, I show you that because that's the essence of teamwork, and I'm sure the engineers at Honda had a field day working on that, but that is what teamwork's all about, working together to become to create something greater than what independently we could do on our own. And it takes a lot of development and conscious thought about how to do it correctly. Well, thank you for your time, and we'll talk to you in the next chapter.